Hello everybody, how y'all doing? This Wolf in here. Uh, today's podcast is going to be uh, about basically talking about indie, not indie, talking about horror games and horror movies. And basically, you know, why we don't seem to see a whole lot of either. I mean, we, I mean, we see plenty, but uh, not as much as like mainstream stuff. I mean, horror has always been a niche thing. Um, going back, I mean, you know, you talk about the 1940s. You know, after World War II, horror movies kind of went away, um, mainly because people had seen real horror. They didn't want to. They didn't want to re- be reminded of, you know, fake horror. So, so then you got the you know 1950s start rolling around. Then the atomic, the atomic age monsters start uh, coming into play between 50s and 60s, and then you know then you know 60s. Then Hammer starts coming back out with the uh, with the uh, main, I guess you could say mainstream monsters. So, you know, Hammer starts coming out with Dracula, Wolfman, Mummy, Frankenstein, all that kind of good stuff. And then, you know, 70s was the start of the slasher era. And that lasted for a, for a pretty good time. And then it's always cyclical. Then all of a sudden we started getting zombie movies and vampire movies and were- and, and werewolf movies. So it's, you know, it's all that. But to me, it always seems like indie groups tend to do, or smaller groups tend to do these movies and these games better. Uh, I think it's a lot of it has to do with uh, the suits. The suits have this, the suits don't care about the genre. The suits care about making money. So they have their little checklist of, you know, what I, you know, what makes a good movie, which works for some things like maybe your rom-coms and shit like that but for horror no 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 no. you've horror you need to push the envelope you need to you need to think outside the box for a good horror movie and most big either big developer game developers or big uh production companies have a very 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 hard time thinking outside the box unless it's a director writer that is well known that they will give a little bit of a chance to, but that's why, I mean, my, some of my favorite either games or movies, honestly, tend to be smaller companies. Um, there's a lot of good, like some of my favorite horror movies like troll or, um, 30 days a night trying to think of, uh, there's a, where, uh, Oh, dog soldiers. Um, you know, you've got are done by smaller companies. Uh, they can take the chances because they don't have it's like you know they're they, they're given an infant they're given a finite amount of money. They know what they have to work under, and so th- for like effects and things like that, they take chances. They come up with ideas of going. You know, it's like okay, I want this. We can't afford this. Okay, so I want the same effect, but how can we do it? Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Normal effects, not CGI, but, uh, classic effects. And I'm blinking on the freaking term. There's a term that goes with it and I can't remember practical effects. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brain. So, so you've got, so, so those developers have to think outside the box of how to get what they want without a big budget. Oh, another favorite movie of mine, Grave Encounters. Um, very, very, very little CGI in that. Uh, everything is practical effects and things off screen that screws with your mind. And, and we all know the mind, the mind will fill in the blanks. And usually what the mind fills in is way worse than anything that they can put on screen. So, but, uh, but you know, it was was things like that, that as far as movies go, horror, horror, uh, games, I say horror games are about the same thing. I mean, I'm trying to think of some big developers with horror that they just always miss the mark. Um, I mean, Diablo four, I'm liking Diablo four. It's, it's good, but, the suits got involved and it's, and they're making it more about the money, which I mean, as a business, yes, you've got to, you know, you got to make money as a business, 
but you've also got to care about your players too. Um, I mean, think long term, not short term. And most of these, most of these suits don't look at long term at all. And so they'll throw in the you know monetization type stuff, and yes, they'll get some money in the in you know quickly. But in the long term, they're not going to get any, and they could have got the same amount of money in long term if they just would have done it differently. But I mean, some of my favorite games, I mean, Phasmophobia. I mean, anyone that watches my channels knows that I play Phasmophobia a lot. I'm trying right now currently to get 20K before the, uh, the next update, which is supposed to wipe, uh, wipe the levels and wipe the money. So, so yeah, so I'm, so I'm hoping for it. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. Uh, I should, if they, if they do the update late July, I should make 20 K. But I mean, I mean, technically dead by daylight, I believe is a, um, is an indie horror though. Maybe not. I don't know how big that, in, how, how big that group is. Outlast, Outlast is a, is a, is a smaller group. Um, I mean, Demonologist is a, is a smaller group. I mean, I'm really liking the indie horror. The Res Resident Evil, I would say, is not. Um, the Bioware games, I mean, granted, uh, what's the game I'm thinking of? Oh, um, Bioshock. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I know I know it's something like Bioware, but it's not Bioware. Bioshock. I mean, Bioware is not a indie game. Though, I think when they made Bioshock, they were a smaller development team. Uh, then they got bought, then they got bought out. And, uh, yeah, so, and since they got bought out, they're not making as good of games. So, Wife, um, there's a game that's kind of like DBD. It's on Kickstarter. I am blanking on the name. Wife showed it to me last night, but it's another develop the indie development team. It looks like a three or four man, a three or four person team. I was going to say man, because that's all I saw was uh, guys talking, but um, it's basically a carnival, like a Victorian carnival, but you got a uh, carnival barker that is basically the killer. And then you've got uh, mechanical rabbits are your, um, are the players. And so, yeah, so you got, you know, someone's playing the carnival barker and then you've got the, then you got other players playing the rabbits. It's like three or four levels and it looked pretty cool. It's very uh, visually appealing. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do the Kickstarter on that one. Because they're going, I think it's like 35 bucks you get guaranteed into the beta. So I'm trying to decide, okay, is 35 bucks, is this game worth it enough for me to try it out on Kickstarter? Because I mean, Kickstarter, if it's doing a Kickstarter, it means this game could be like one, two, three years from even showing up. Though it does seem like they've got a lot, a lot to do, but the, hopefully there's way more maps than what they've got. Um, but yeah, but the big stu the big studios, either movies or games, they don't want to take chances on horror. Horror is such a niche, um, niche field, and that's and that's been since. I mean, that's been since movies have started. Of it's always just been hard for big studios to make things that might upset people, and and that's one of the biggest reasons is they don't want to upset their constituents. So even though they know that you know this might be a big you know this might be something big, they could make a lot of money off it, but they also know they're going to piss off a bunch of people because oh no, it's you know they're talking about vampires. Vampires go against Christianity. Well, most monsters go against Christianity. So they don't want to, you know, piss off those consist constituents. So it's kind of like, it's a freaking movie. It's a freaking game. Get over it. But, um, but that's me. <laughs> uh, what else? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, my own opinion, I trust an indie game, an indie movie, way more than I do a big budget uh, production company or a development team. Just because the indie guys, they take chances. They think outside the box. They're the ones who are going to surprise you. Uh, not, not the big, not the big ones. The big, the big, the big guys play it safe. 
They're not going to take that chance that's going to wow you. Um, they're going to play it safe and it's going to honestly probably be boring. Um, or, and they're probably going to end up telling whoever's developing it for them. They're going to rush it and they're going to say, okay, you know, cause usually it's like, like for most, for like most big games, like MMOs and stuff like that, I'm going to say probably game regular games are probably about the same. Um, you know, you're talking about four or five years of commitment there. Well, the big, I mean, the big shots don't want to give you that time. Um, they want to, they want to see a return from their money that they're investing in. So they're going to make that a three, you know, two and a half to three year mark. I mean, there's a reason why all the big, all the big movie, all the big movies out now. I mean, you're hearing about them being made and they're hell. They're usually out either the next year or the year after where, you know, you used to see, you know, bigger movies take a few years, but I mean, even but games, games now, um, you know, especially like MMOs, you're talking, you know, used to be five years and you got a good product when it came out. Now they're being rushed out within three and there are so many problems with the games. It's ridiculous. Uh, you're getting the same thing with horror games. There's been, there's been some big, big budget horror games that have come out that were just filled with bugs because no, they got, they were, they were rushed out. They were told, Nope, you got to get this game out. Now you can fix it later. Um, and so you're paying, you know, 60 bucks for a game that barely freaking works. And it's all because of the suits, the suits suck. They don't care about us. They care about, you know, their shareholders and, you know, getting their money back where we care about, you know, a good product. Now we're paying it, you know, 60, 70, 80 bucks. We would like to actually have a game that works not a game that uh, is broke and we can barely play it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I just kind of wanted to talk about was just kind of go over just kind of my thoughts on the uh, horror scene games and games and movies. Why I like the indie scene a lot more than I do uh, the main, the mainstream scene. And in a nutshell, it's they take chances they will come up with ideas because they don't have a budget to be able to work totally with. So they'll come up with cool ideas to make something look honestly more believable than the CGI crap that gets put up. Look, I like CGI. CGI is good. Um, CGI is definitely, definitely helps with certain things, but there are also certain things that CGI is easier. It's faster, but it's not better. <laughs> and and so the practical effects definitely make it look better and smaller, smaller companies can do the practical effects better And gaming depends on what you got. Um, I mean, like a lot of the games I play use the, the unity engine instead of the unreal four or five. Um, unity is pretty good. I mean, it, it looks, it looks decent. Unreal. No, not going to lie. Unreal definitely looks better. Uh, but there's, there's things with unreal that, I mean, they're still working on and they're, and it's not fixed and people don't even know how to fix it. So unity seems to be a little bit more stable platform. It's like, yeah, unreal looks great, but if you can't, you know, but half the, un, especially half of the indie unreal games I play use so much either CPU or GPU usage. It's freaking ridiculous. It's like my PC sounds like a freight train, but I think that's about it, everybody. So I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. Once again, if you guys like the video, give the video a like. If you guys are not sub to the channel, sub to the channel. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace out. Love you all. Bye.